I trust you did well on that quiz. How many in here think you did really well? I think you made that 100. You got all of them correct. A couple people. All right. Anyone feel like, ah, there was one or two I was a little unsure of, but I feel like I got most of them. Okay. All right. We'll take a look at those next lesson. Um, I had you read over some things last night in your homework, and um, it uh, had to do with uh, Pascal's triangle here. How many remember seeing that in the homework? Okay, now the book um, showed it this direction. It also showed a, a horizontal arrangement as well. And uh, man, if you're turning your book to page 489 and you see some of these formulas, I mean, it just looks, it looks terrifying. Um, so I want to make things a lot easier than the way the book teaches us. Not that the book is in any way wrong in the way that they present what I call the binomial theorem. But uh, page 489, there's a much easier way to do what they're trying to do. I want you to consider for just a moment a binomial raised to the zero power. Well, class, we know that anything, even a binomial, raised to the zero power equals one. And if I were to raise x plus y to the first power, of course, class, that would just be x plus y, because anything in the first is itself. But I'm going to write it differently. I'm going to write 1x plus 1y. If I were to square the binomial x plus y, well, we know we square the first, square the last, multiply and double so that, Audrey, we would get There we go. She went and squared the first, multiply and double, squared the last. So I'm going to write 1x squared plus 2xy plus 1y squared. Of course, if I were to cube a binomial, well, this would be, uh, this would be x plus y times you know, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, right? It would be x plus y to the first times an x plus y squared, right? That's what cubed would be. And so we would distribute the x, Abby, to get? Um, x to the third plus um, 2x squared y plus x, y squared. And of course, we would distribute the y next to get Genesis. Um, y times x squared? Cut in your way here. Is this out of the way? Y times x squared? Um, y, x, y. Say that again. X, y. Well, the y is x squared, the x is squared. X squared, y. Oh. Yeah, just x squared, y. All right. And y times 2xy. 2x, y squared. 2xy squared. Square. And then y times y squared. Y cubed. Okay, so it's kind of sloppy, but you get the idea. If we were to add, the x cubed has no friends. The 2x squared y and the x squared y added together gives us a 3x squared y. The x y squared and the 2x y squared gives me a 3x y squared, and the y cubed has no friends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 1x cubed and 1y cubed. Now, if we just look at the numbers, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, we see the same pattern developing there on Pascal's triangle. Whatever power to which you seek to raise a binomial the second row diagonally, not the first row, it's always ones at the beginning and ones at the end, but the second row diagonally, that squared, you would use this row. Cubed would use this row. So in this example here, a fourth power would use this row for the numerical coefficients. That's the, comp that's the um, correlation to Pascal's triangle. Now the book then shows all of that, and they turn around and complicate the situation by saying, now notice all of these numbers are combinations of x many that uh, chosen x many at a time. And that's an interesting pattern, but man, that makes things complicated. So as opposed to using their version of the binomial theorem, I'm going to give you my version of the binomial theorem. Next thing in your notes, the binomial theorem used to raise any binomial to any power. The binomial theorem used to raise any binomial to any power. The binomial theorem used to raise any binomial to any power. So we're familiar with squaring binomials, but what about cubing, fourth thing, fifth thing, sixth thing, you know, raising to the twelfth power, whatever. Well, we can do all of that, and we're going to use Pascal's triangle to do it. But first, I need to make sure we see the pattern in Pascal's triangle. Now, admittedly, students watching on video, students in this class, we actually already looked at it once because they were curious, but uh, we notice that this one always starts the row. Well, since the row also has to end in a 1, if we take these two 1s, it adds to give 2. 
One and two adds to get three, and two and one adds to get three. One and three to get four, three and three to six, three and one to four. So one and four to five, four and six to 10, six and four to 10, four and one to five. So we see how this row is formed then. One and five, six, five and 10, 15, 10 and 10, 20, 10 and 15, five, or 10 and five, 15, and so forth. What would the next row in the triangle have to be? Well, every row class starts with a one. The next number then would be the sum of the first two class, seven. The next digit, or the next number rather, a 21 as we add the six and 15, then 35. Then another 35 is repeated and notice the pattern repeats itself. We're back to a 21 then, and then finally one. See if we can't uh, slide this down just a little bit here, give myself more room. All right, so then what would the next line be? Kendall? Um, one, eight, one, eight, um, four, six. Mm. Two and three gives five, five so. Fifty-six, there we go. Um, seven, eight, and you realize this could go on infinitely, right? Because there's an infinite number of powers you could select for a given binomial. So if we see the pattern in Pascal's triangle, it makes it easy to, to uh, raise binomials to powers. Now, if you turn the page, look at page 490 for just a moment. They have an x plus y to the fourth power. And look at the work that is required. I am lazy. Does that look like my style? Nope. Look at the next one, x plus y cubed. That's another no. Uh, look at uh, the next example at the bottom, c minus 3d cubed. That would be another big no, okay? So we're not going to do any of that. Here's what you're going to do. Step number one, use Pascal's triangle to get the coefficients. Use Pascal's triangle to obtain coefficients. Use Pascal's triangle to obtain coefficients. All right, so step one, coefficients from triangle, meaning Pascal's triangle. Number two, you're going to start with A, which is how we'll describe our first term. That's term A. That's why. Sticky tack on the back was holding it in place. Um, so A, we're going to start it to the N and go down to A to the 0. So this is all all right. We're going to take the A, which is my first term, start at the nth power, and drop it down. Okay, so this is for A plus or minus B to the N. So we're going to start the A to whatever that nth power is, descend it. However, the B is going to start out to the 0 power and ascend up to the nth power. The B is going to start at the zero power and ascend up to the nth power. Finally, number four, we're going to remember two rules about signs. For signs, a positive would give all positive. A negative would give me alternating signs. A lot of this is going to remind you of factoring a sum or difference of the same odd powers in a way. Notice, for instance, a plus b to the fourth power. This isn't terribly different from the first example in your book on page 490. This is an a and a b. Well, notice we would start with, a, the, since it's the fourth power, we're going to start with the row that has the four, not as the first number, obviously. The first number is always one, but it's the second number. has the fourth. So this is the four row. Does that make sense, terminology? So we start with the four row, one, four, six, four, one. Then the A is my first term, and it starts out to the fourth power. So we have the fourth cubed squared first gone. Then the B starts out gone. That'd be to the first squared cubed fourth. Since there's a positive, I put all positives, and I didn't have to use my calculator to do anything. Doesn't that seem a lot easier than what's in a book? Yeah, I don't like using combinations for this either. Write this example in your notes, if you would, please. Um, actually, let, let's let's look at this. Um, well, yeah, let, let's write this example. Don't forget their examples. Uh, let's do n minus n to the sixth power. Now, the old-fashioned way of doing this is n minus n squared, 
and then multiply that by another m minus n squared, whatever you've got for your value, then multiply that by another m minus n squared, and that would be one way to get to the sixth power. We're not gonna do any of that. Instead, we're gonna start by getting our coefficients from the triangle. So we're gonna start by writing out our six row, since my power is six. What is the six row, Genesis? And I'm going to leave spaces in between because there's more writing to come. These are just the coefficients. But we write down the row of six, the sixth row from the triangle. Step number two, we're going to take our A. Now, A means the first term. Well, in this case, what's my first term, class? M. And we're going to start it out to the nth power. In other words, class, I'm going to start with M to the sixth. Then it's going to descend down toward M to the zero. So we start with M to the sixth, then it's M to the fifth. Fourth, cubed, gone. gone. Six, five, four, three, two, one, gone. There's my M's. Then we're going to start the B or the second term as gone. Well, what is my B term class? One would argue it's a negative N. I would say just the N because the sign is going to take care of itself. So make your life easy because you're lazy. Don't even worry about the sign. Just say it's N. Okay, so n is going to start zero power, or n is going to start gone. Then it's going to grow. So now, class, we have n to the first, or just n. Then n squared. Do we see how our first term descends? Our first term is descending. Our second term is ascending. And then finally, for our signs, if it's a positive like we see here, all the signs are positive. If it's a negative like we see here, the signs alternate. Now your first term's always positive. If you want to jot that down, first term is going to actually be an understood positive. So we're going to have our positive understood first term. There we go. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And I just raised a binomial to the sixth power without doing any math at all. And not using any of those crazy combinations that were so obnoxious. Seem easy? Now, here's the only catch. This is easy if you have Pascal's triangle in front of you. What if you don't have Pascal's triangle in front of you? What if the poster isn't up here? Then you make your own Pascal's triangle, and that's pretty easy, too. If you remember that the top of Pascal's triangle class is a 1. Go ahead and get out a blank sheet of paper. Get a blank sheet of paper, never been written on before. Put at the top of the page, put a 1. Then we're going to split this into a pair of 1s. So you have to make a little triangle with three 1s in it. Once you have those three 1s, you can continue putting 1s on the edges and simply add. So my next row class is going to be where you put the 2 in between the other two 1s. Then my next row. And the next row. Good, I'm hearing a couple key voices here. I'd like to hear all voices for my next row class. And we could keep going. Let's do just one more row, though. Now, I've had students who, uh, you know, board in study hall made out to like 20 or 30 rows of this thing, okay? If you want to, be my guest if you're that bored, okay? That takes in my mind a lot of boredom. But it's not hard to construct the triangle yourself. Here's what I'm going to allow you to do. If you choose to make the triangle bigger, you can, but I'm going to allow you to keep this sheet of paper provided you write nothing else on it. This can be your cover sheet for the rest of the year. That way, instead of having to replicate this for quizzes and tests, you already have it in front of you. So there may be an advantage to making the triangle slightly bigger in case there's a problem that has 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th powers on it. You'd have that on hand, but you've at least got a start to it. If you write anything else on it, I'm not going to let you use it as a cover sheet. If it just has the triangle on it, however big you choose to make it, then it could be your cover sheet. And on quizzes and tests, boom, you've got your triangle right there. You don't have to make a new one. Yes, sir? Remember the rows. They already are. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So they should already be numbers. Yep. All right, any other questions on that? All right, so now that we've got that piece of paper in front of us, I'm going to free up my chalkboard space. And uh, you realize it's got to be somewhat more complicated than this because, I mean, you're in Algebra 2. This is too stupid easy to be an Algebra 2 concept if that's as hard as it gets. Well, it gets a little harder, but not much. Write this down. A plus B, or AB, excuse me, AB plus C to the fourth power. AB plus C to the fourth power. One thing that will make this slightly more challenging, keep that paper in front of you. You're going to need it for the rest of the hour, and you'll need it for your homework, and you'll need it for quizzes and tests. Um, but have that paper out in front of you. One thing that makes it harder is if instead of a single letter class, you have a couple of letters. That's just a little bit more to keep track of. It's still not harder, and it doesn't change the steps. We still get our coefficients from the triangle. So look down at the triangle that you copied. What set of numbers should I write down, Brandon? How did you know that those were the numbers you should write? It's to, the power. it's to the fourth power. So you find the row that is number four. Now here's the key. My A represents my first term. What is my first term class? AB. A, and it needs to start to that same nth power. So I'm going to start with AB class to the fourth question. Instead of writing AB to the fourth, I could just write down what AB to the fourth is. What is AB to the fourth, Maddie? A to the fourth, B to the fourth. And then in my next term class, AB has to be Q. So I'm going to write AQ, BQ. Then AB is so, and then just AB, and then finally the AB is gone. So a little harder, I guess. There's two letters to fourth cube squared first gone instead of one, but it's not much harder, would we agree? So we're still not terrified of it or anything. Okay, then the C is my second term, the last term, if you will. It starts out class gone, and it grows till it hits that power, in this case, the fourth power. So first term, gone. Then C, then, then, and then finally, what about my signs? What are my signs going to be in the answer here, Michael? Um, all, positives. all positives. So we have all positives in my answer. Now, one word of caution. What if this said AC plus B to the fourth? A to the fourth, C to the fourth. A cubed, C cubed, but a B to the first. So A cubed, B, C cubed. You see alphabetical order could be a pain as well. So uh, something to watch for. This one worked out great. The alphabetical order fixed itself. If these were somewhat mixed, then that could cause you a problem. Another issue would be if there's a number in one of the spots. So write this next one down, x plus 2 to the fifth. x plus 2 to the fifth. This could cause a minor headache. Causes a little bit more work. I don't think it's hard work, though, especially since you have a calculator. We still start the same way. Every time you see a binomial raised to a power other than squared, because we know how to square the first square less multiply and double, though this method works for that too, we get our coefficients class from, from the triangle, from Pascal's triangle. So we're going to start by writing what set of numbers here, Kendall? Um, There we go. After the 1, the 5, the 10, the 10, the 5, the 1, what do I need to write now? Genesis? Good. Now, the next thing I'm going to write, class, are going to be ascending powers of 2. The 2 starts out gone. Then it's simply a 2. You'll want to put it in parentheses. But in the next term, it's a 2 squared. I would encourage you to do that in your head. What is 2 squared? Don't write 2 squared. You make your life more challenging. You can do that in your head. Then in the next term, 2 cubed becomes an 8. Then a 16 for 2 to the 4th. And finally, 32 for 2 to the 5th. So with letters, we will use exponents. 
with numbers as you go from 2 to the 0, so it's gone, 2 to the first, 2 squared, looking this way, 2 cubed, 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fifth. Don't write numbers with powers. Do them in your head, or even if you have to, real quick on the calculator. Like, if this said that x plus 7, well, I don't know 7 to the fifth either. So do that on the calculator real quick, right? When you buy the time, you get to the 7 to the fifth. Like, 7 gone, no problem. 7 to the first, I mean, that's 7. 7 squared, 49, I got that. 7 cubed, 343. 7 to the fourth, uh, I don't know. 2401, okay, and then 7 to the fifth, okay, calculator, right? So um, you could do that. And then the, the last step as far as listed here, of course, is your signs. What's going to be true of my signs here, Brandon? All positives. All positives. Here's why numbers are a little bit more work, because you're not done. You can't leave the answer like this because we always simplify as much as we can. Abby, what should we do now? Um, do, do, um, multiply the 2 by the constant. Right. Actually, multiply 5x to the 4th times 2. Of course, 1x to the 5th could just be x to the 5th, Abby. But here we get 10x uh, to the 4th. And then here we get 4x squared. And you're doing this with us. Here you get 8x squared. Then 80x. Good, and then, and that's how we'll leave the final answer. So with numbers, there's that last step of actually multiplying the powered numbers by the coefficients you got from the triangle. So the, the triangle's not immediately obvious. You don't see 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1 anymore, do you? Right, but it's still there. It's just been multiplied by the other powers. Questions on that? Still feel like you understand what we're doing here, right? Simplification, not a hard step. The last thing that could complicate things is if you have a value already to a power in the binomial. So for instance, something obscene like this, x squared minus 5y to the fourth. Now I am going to do my first set of steps in a way I would not recommend you do it because this is not the lazy way. But for sake of showing it, I want to show exactly what we do. First thing you will do with me, class, is we'll write down our coefficients. And which coefficients will we write? Um, Genesis? So. The next step is to take class our, which A just stands for our first term. This A represents first term, B represents second term. You may want to jot that down. A equals first term, B equals second term. Okay, if you, if you wanted to, uh, to do that, you could notate that as well. So we're going to take our first term, and we're going to raise it, in this case class, to the fourth power. So we're going to take our x squared. Don't write this down now. Just watch. To the fourth, then cubed, then squared, then first, and then it's gone. But you're not going to write that. You should be able to do that in your head. So where you've got your 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 written down, class, you're not going to write x squared to the fourth. You know, because when you raise the power to a power, you multiply the exponents. You know you're going to get x to the eighth. And then here we're going to get x to the sixth. Then, then, and then it's gone. That's what you're going to do. But do we see why we do that? Do we have it written down? The next step, of course, is to take our B class, or our second term, and start it out as gone. So my second term is the 5y. Both the 5 and the y class start out gone. Then I have 5y to the first, which, of course, you will simply write 5y. Then I've got class... 5y squared, but you don't write that. What do you write instead? 25y squared. You're doing this with me. Make sure you're writing. For the next one, I've got 5y cubed, or what you're going to write, 5 cubed and y cubed. 125y cubed. And then finally, at the very end, we're to the fourth power final. 5y to the fourth. But what we write, and this is where you made me the calculator, 625y to the fourth. What about my signs? They're going to alternate. First term is always 
positive understood. So the negative, positive, negative, positive. It starts with a positive, but the first term you write will be the negative. Again, so negative, positive, negative, positive, since we have the positive first term. Again, we are not finished. We now need to simplify our answer. The first term requires no simplification. Just keep the x to the eighth. But what's the next term going to be, Audrey? Good, and we'll keep the negative as well. So negative 20 x to the sixth y. What about the next term, Brandon? 150 x to the Good, you corrected yourself. 150 x to the fourth y squared. The next term is going to be what, Michael? Uh, negative 500 x squared y cubed. And we'll finish, of course, with the 625 y to the fourth. Here again, it's not as obvious if you just look at the answer what was done, but you did start with a 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. It did start with 4th cubed squared first gone. It just looks like 8th, 6th, 4th squared gone because everything was already squared. And because it was a 5 and a y, both the 5 and the y gone first squared cubed fourth. It's just the 5 is blended in with the coefficient now as it was raised to the power. Questions on what we're doing to raise to a power. I feel like this is so much easier, though, still, than what we saw in the example problems because we just base it off Pascal's triangle. It's an easy pattern to see. I don't think we need combinations to do it. But again, I guess you could if you wanted to. Questions on this? All right, for homework this evening, you're going to do page 491. Page 491, numbers 2 through 14, the even numbered problems. Page 491, numbers 2 through 14, the even numbered problems. Take a look at those in our lesson tomorrow. And then we will use combinations in the binomial formula tomorrow. So there is a time where the, did you get away in time? Mm -hmm. Did you get out in time? It got gotcha, you, I'm sorry. Um, you don't find her. All right, uh, spiteful. Uh, so we will use combinations tomorrow, but for today, no combinations used. Take 291, or 491, numbers 2 through 14 even. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And when the bell rings, you'll be dismissed. Thank you.